Welcome back to another video everyone. So back in early 2020 during the first lockdown I became quite interested in game collecting and two years later I don't have anywhere to put all this stuff. Now I'm not at the point where I feel like I need to buy everything in immaculate condition sealed in its original packaging graded by one of those companies that rates the condition of games. I pray to god every day that I never get to that point. But I do try and at least buy games complete in their original box. The instruction book isn't always necessary but I don't know, I miss opening games and seeing more than just a game in an empty box. I know I could emulate or play a lot of these games elsewhere, but there's just something fun about collecting them. Plus, every time I try to emulate something, I always encounter a weird graphical bug, and then after I spend 15 minutes fixing it, it just creates another bug. It happens every single time without fail. I do emulate games, but more often than not, I can't be asked to spend 20 minutes just getting the game to work. I'd rather just load it up and play it. Anyway, even though I've only been doing this for about two years, I thought I would share some tips for anyone that wants to get in to game collecting. I have strategies on how to get games slightly cheaper and even though my strategies are most likely common knowledge I want to share them anyway for people that don't know about them because they are useful. Ironically one of the best places to buy games in the UK is a place called Sex. Some people say it like CEX, other people like me say Kex because there's no way I'm going around saying yeah mate I'm just going to Sex real quick. For anyone that doesn't know Kex is one of the biggest secondhand goods chains in the UK. I prefer using their website to buy stuff because not only does it let you shop across every Kex shop in the country but it lets let you save a list of games that you want. It's useful if you're looking for a rare game or something that just isn't in stock. You can save it on your list and then when someone eventually trades it into a Keck shop, it'll pop up online and you can buy it before someone else does. Now there is a downside to buying from Keck's online and that's the fact that you have no idea what condition your game is going to arrive in. They have multiple listings for each item. You've got Unboxed, which is a game on its own, Boxed, which is a bit more expensive but does guarantee that it will come in its box, and Mint, which is of course Mint Condition. I normally go for Boxed because Mint condition is usually way too expensive or sold out because collectors have already bought them. Plus the chances of someone going into a keg store and trading in a mint copy of a 20 year old game are pretty low so those listings usually remain blanked out. Unboxed is the cheapest option but as I mentioned earlier I like cardboard boxes. So when I buy from Kex, I go for the boxed option, but that doesn't guarantee that the box will be in a good condition or will include any optional things like the manual. I've bought things from here that were on the brink of falling apart, but I've also had the complete opposite experience as well. Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy. I had this saved for a very long time until one day I checked my list and someone had traded it in. I bought it because it was £30, which was way cheaper than every other listing on eBay. They've actually bumped the price up recently up to £38, but when it arrived I was shocked to find find out it was basically mint condition not just that though but it included everything inside as far as i know this is what you call a kex win it's not always like this i have had quite a few experiences similar but a lot of times you're just going to get things in decent condition for example my copy of super mario bros i mean it's not bad i wouldn't particularly call it good either that's the downside to buying from kex online you don't get to see the copy that you're buying if only there was a way to buy online and actually see what you're gonna get ebay the only problem with ebay is the prices are usually ridiculous don't get me wrong kex can be awful for their prices as well but i feel like people find that they have a semi-rare game and decide to list it on ebay for 10 grand oh look at this i've got a mario game Ooh, this has to be at least 35 years old this is a relic at this point let's sell it on ebay for 700 pounds old doesn't equal rare i have had a lot of good experiences on ebay though probably the best one was when i bought kirby's adventure wii and the seller sent me a note with a joke on it lewis i tried to think of a kirby joke but they all suck. I gave that seller a five star rating. One of the biggest tips I have for buying on eBay is always make an offer before buying something, even if it's not an option. If you can save a few pounds on every game that you buy, that's gonna add up to a lot over the years. Now, if the seller doesn't have the make an offer option available, send them a personal message with an offer. You might think they turned it off for a reason because they don't wanna accept offers, but I do this all the time and it works. I've saved a lot of money by doing this. And again, it's probably common knowledge, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't even think Think about making an offer when the option isn't there. Both Kex and eBay have their downsides. I like making offers on eBay, but a lot of times Kex have better base prices. Sometimes I'd rather just wait until certain games show up on there instead. This is all for old stuff though. When it comes to new gen games, I like to shop at game. 
brilliant name for a game store. They have really good 3 for 2 deals on Xbox One and PS4 games and for brand new day one releases I just drive down and pick it up. I used to buy games from Amazon on day release but they always deliver it at like 4pm and then I have to install the game which can take a few hours so it's not really day release at that point. Plus the game membership is really good. Every time you buy a game you earn points and those points stack up very quickly and give you a big discount whenever you want to use them. That's pretty much how I've acquired the majority of these games. Not everything was bought over the past two years I grew up with a lot of the Xbox and Wii games and I'm very happy and grateful for all of it even the games that aren't in the best of condition. There are other methods that I haven't tried yet like going to car boot sales. I probably should go to them every now and then because there's a decent chance there will be games there. I can just imagine people clearing out their attic, finding a box of old NES games and taking them to a car boot sale because they can't be asked to check out how much they're worth and sell them on eBay. That's what I imagine at least. In reality, I'd probably show up to one and there'd be no video games at all. I might as well use this as a progress video as well, so that way in about a year or two we can look back on this and see what's changed. As you can see, the majority of the games that I own are from the sixth generation onwards, just simply because I was born in 1999 and this is what I have the most nostalgia for. I wanted to buy for these systems first because I either grew up with them or I didn't grow up with them but wanted to buy them when I was younger. Recently though, I have become more interested in everything prior to that. I don't know, I find the history history of those earlier generations fascinating to read about and obviously there's a lot of good games that came out during that time as well. I think right now the PS1 is my favourite system to buy for. Not only does it have such a good library of games but I just love the fat jewel cases these games come in. I believe they're only this big in the PAL region due to the instruction manual including more languages making it a lot thicker. Other regions seem to use these regular CD cases. I only have one example that being the Japanese version of Crash Bash. Look at the size difference. I have one game for the Vita the Nokia Engage, the Philips CDI. I find the history behind Hotel Mario and the game itself hilarious. Now, even though I like buying games physically, I still take full advantage of digital sales, re-releases, collections. Pokemon Crystal, 225 pounds on Kex or nine pounds on the 3DS. Yeah, I enjoy collecting, but I'm buying this on the 3DS. 700 pounds for Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. Fuck no! This is why I love collections and re-releases. It gives me a way to own these older, overpriced retro games in some way, shape or form, digitally or physically. There's always so many great sales online though. I finished Bioshock Infinite because the collection was on sale for like £7 on Xbox at one point. Speaking of Xbox, Game Pass. I love it. I've beaten so many games on here that I don't own yet. None of them are extremely expensive or anything, it's just that there's so much on here and it's so easy to access that I've played games I probably wouldn't have checked out for a long time. Now one question I imagine I'll get at some point in the future is, do I play all of these games? No. I mean, I'll try and get to all of them at some point, that's the intention, but it will take years. I play one game at a time at my own pace, so yeah, I probably won't get some of the stuff I own for three years, but I'm happy that I own it now because the prices go up all the time. I mean, some games are so short that I could beat them the same day that I start them, but then there's games like Final Fantasy X. That took a long time to finish, but it was worth it. What wasn't worth it was the two hours that I spent doing the Chocobo Racing Challenge, but other than that, it was worth it. Anyway, I've been rambling for long enough. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one.